You ever had a day like this? Well, that is the visual representation of your day. Today's not one of those days. Today's been great. Welcome to Flannel Guys. Hey, welcome back. So, I want to talk to you today about a digital Amish barn raising. What is a digital Amish barn raising? Well, what is an Amish barn raising? I'm sure you guys have probably seen uh, some of those PBS documentaries or whoever, where the Amish all gather together on one day and they throw this barn up. And there's normally time lapse, right? And there's like 400 people running around. And they throw this whole barn up in a day. And the one farmer, or whoever the Amish guy is, that needs it built, has everything set up. And then a whole bunch of people come and they give several hours of their day and they help this guy raise his barn. We as millennials, I find your patriarchal labeling system toxic. I say we, you'll forgive me. There's a whole bunch of us, and uh, I know a bunch of you that watch this channel, who are millennials. And we feel like we've missed out on a lot of things. Uh, we aren't able to, like several generations before us, to just leave high school, go to a factory, get a job, and buy a house and a truck, and just, that's enough, you can live. It's been harder for us in some ways. And what is, what is the answer to that? Do we just go after the boomers and take all their stuff? No. No, I don't think so. Every generation has had to figure out how to make it work for them. And part of what our generation has figured out is digital barn raising. And what I mean by that is a lot of you have come from my brother's channel, uh, David the Good. And I thank you for coming. We have, we are like this close to passing 650 subscribers. So for those of you that have come here recently, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you're a part of a digital barn raising. I don't have the ability to uh, go to my buddy Sean the Modern Yeoman's homestead and help him build a pig enclosure. And he doesn't necessarily have the ability to come to my place um, that we're closing on in just three weeks and help me clean out the barn, for example. We are too far apart, it's just not possible. We can't do that sense of community type thing in person that people used to be able to do. So I watch his videos and he watches my videos and you guys have been watching the videos and what you're doing is essentially helping me build my dream by donating some of your time to watch these videos and so I wanted to say thank you and that I really appreciate it and you are a part of our barn raising so thank you before we leave we have some things we have to do around here and I wanted to show you our garden that we had here that we're going to have to unfortunately pull out. Um, part of it will be pulled out anyway because it's the fall and it's just time to get rid of the tomatoes or kind of taste them lousy and stuff like that. So we're going to get those cleaned up. Unfortunately I'm not going to be able to plant anything here in time and I think I'm going to miss the season at the new place. But we'll figure it out. So let's go take a look at that. In case you were wondering where we were filming, that's our tree fort. That's going to have to come down unfortunately, but I'm going to take it apart and move it to the new place. So, but that's a different video. Anyways, on to the garden. So here's what's left of our summer garden. Now these beds are double dug garden beds, not that you can see it right now. And I'm sure most of you know what double dug garden beds are, but for those of you that don't, this, was our, this is our walkway. Look at this, this thing went nuts. This is where we're supposed to walk, that's the other bed. But anyways, what a double dug garden bed is, is you dig through the top layer and you get down, I don't know, six inches, eight inches, something like that. You pull all that dirt out. And then, look at this, this thing went nuts. This is my neighbor's yard. Sorry, neighbor, we're leaving. So we won't be a bother anymore. So what you do is you dig down, I don't know, six, eight inches, a spade's depth. You pull it out and then you till the bottom of your ditch. So you loosen all that up, so another four to six inches down and you start tilling. And then you mix compost back in with the soil that you pulled out. So instead of having to dig down eight to 10 inches to do that, you only have to dig down about half of that and then you get tilled 16 to 18 inches. There have been like books and stuff written about this. My brother has a pretty good video on it. 
so you can go check that out. So we did that two years ago, and then last year we added these boards down here and raised the ground level up a little bit more with compost. So our tomatoes are done. The only thing left in here that's really worth trying to keep are these squash. And these squash, there you are, are interlopers from our chicken coop. We pulled the little seedlings out from our chicken manure and planted them. And this is what came up. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to plant much of a fall crop like I would like to because we just don't have time here. So we've gotta get this cleaned up some kind of way. Let's get busy with that. Also, my brother has a video on using chickens to help you compost stuff. So all of the plant debris from this is gonna to get tossed to the chickens. They are going to have a feast I think the chickens are gonna get a kick out of that. What do you think? That's a lot of good stuff. I guess we missed a few. We've had more cucumbers this year that I know what to do with. They're pretty well covered. There you go. Happy little things. Lots to eat. They process stuff really quick. And before you think that I forgot about our poor girls in the chicken tractor, remember the chicken tractor? I have not. I have not forgot about them. What we're gonna do actually is take the chicken tractor over to where the garden bed was and let them have some fun. So let's do that. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. Wanna come help us catch some And there's the chicken tractor in our garden bed with chickens finishing up stuff. So we'll just slide them around. I also forgot to mention, one of the reasons that we put the garden here is it got just enough sunlight for the vegetables and 
if you see my wife running away in the background. If you see our air conditioners, air conditioners have condensation lines. And the condensation ran down and it actually watered the beds for us. I think it's part of the reason why they went so nuts. So we had good soil, we had good sun, and we had good water. But that's it for today. I appreciate y'all joining us. Thanks for watching. The obligatory like and subscribe. And don't forget, dress for the job you want. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, next time, I will either be introducing a new character into the repertoire. So far we have uh, Libertarian Gollum, we have Property Manager, and hopefully in the next few days you guys will get to meet Yuri from the Soviet Republic of People's Democratically Elected Olympic Committees. Bye. Postscript. I don't think it matters what the next person that lives here does. They are going to have a tomato apocalypse. There's just no way. <laughs> There's so many tomatoes. There's gonna be tomato plants everywhere next year. Anyways, see ya.